we will only use the words ass, damn, hell, and bitch. We will never, however, use the words shit, fuck, goddamn, Jesus Christ, faggot, or any other racial or sexual slurs. Now then, as it pertains to video, we promise there will be less dick references. Oh, shit. Watch your fucking mouth. Well, fuck me. God damn it. Fuck. Anyway, there will be less penis references. Oh, and one last thing. Even though many of you believe that currently the favorite pastime in the oral office is swallow the leader, I did not. I repeat, I did not sleep with that young intern. As a matter of fact, I was up all night. <laughs> Vocabulary too. Uh, I've been hits in the distant distance. It's all brand new. new. Yeah. You're through. I'm in the planetary uh, like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Everybody, welcome to Break Town Pro Wrestling. Keith and Keisha are in the building. Keisha, say hi to the people. What up, everyone? Um. <clears throat> Not trying to be too loud today. Not trying to act out today. You know, trying to be a good person. I'm trying to behave. I don't know how to do that yet, so I'm working on it. I'm really, really working on it. Uh, I gave up on being a good person, so this thing could go off the rails <laughs> at any moment. Uh, of course. Of course it can. Hey, man. I, just like, you know, when you be like, you crazy. I'm like, man, I ain't never told y'all I was saved. What the hell wrong with y'all? Right? You know, I really don't understand when people say that. It's like, when did I ever? <laughs> right. Like, when did we have that conversation? Right. I, like, I never. I told you, you I was sure. normal. Exactly. Like, the hell? I told you I was normal. When did I do that? Like, I don't remember that. It is what it is. Whatever. You know, one day people will get it together. Really will. Um, <sighs> today or tonight, as we are recording, it is August eleventh, nineteen ninety-seven. I mean, sorry, two thousand seventeen. Wow, Keish, I just said nineteen ninety-seven. It is two thousand seventeen. It is twenty years from the day of August eleventh, nineteen ninety-seven, where the WWE is celebrating the birth of Degeneration X. Now. I will cite that I think this is a flawed anniversary and Degeneration X does not become officially a thing until October 13th of 1997. But I will let the company that owns the copyright to Degeneration X dictate their anniversary. Right? Because, Keish, this is what they celebrate. WWE celebrate like the first time somebody had sex. You know what I mean? I'm trying to celebrate the actual marriage. And follow me. So, on a fateful night in August and, uh, 11th in 1997, Shawn Michaels is in the main event on Raw against Mankind, right? When Shawn is in this main event against one Mankind, uh, the match gets interrupted. There is uh, one uh, Triple H and one China that uh, steps into the match and then uh, you know later on in the match Rick Rude shows up Triple H in China already had an existing beef with mankind so they people just thought that hey the enemy of my enemy is my friend but no Rick Rude jumps in the fray hits mankind with a chair Shaw wins the match and next thing you know for the next couple of weeks you start seeing all these people together it's a thing they don't have a name they don't have interest music. They don't even have t-shirts yet. But they start playing up an on-screen friendship. Now, 
Triple H to Shawn Michaels are infamous members of the Click K L I Q. Uh, the backstage uh, group that uh, caused ravage and panic throughout the industry. Now, with uh, the other three members of the Click rocking it up in WCW currently, these two gentlemen were left alone in WWE. Uh, they started hanging out with China as China, who also coincidentally was trained by Killer Kowalski, the same guy who trained Triple H. Starts rolling with the crew. Um, you know, things happen, things change. Um, and in the Monday Night Wars, where the ratings get kind of tossed up, the WWE just has to change some things and do something a little different. And they start letting those two guys have a friendship on screen. Good job. So, here we are. Now, my version of how this group happens, hey, October 13th, 1997, there's an interview uh, with Bret Hart for Vince McMahon. He opens up Raw with an interview with Bret Hart, and Triple H and Shawn Michaels break into the interview with a China and Rick Rude behind them, uh, their respective bodyguards at the time. And they break up the interview. They make insults. Da da da. Now, what you will understand: a week before this raw, Bret Hart called Shawn Michaels a degenerate. He said, "You're nothing but a damn degenerate." Okay, so Shawn Michaels took that label of degenerate with pride. Yes, he's a degenerate. Yes, he's a rebel. And you know what? He said he's he and Triple H are members of Generation X. Which I'm pretty sure Shawn Michaels is damn near a baby boomer, but I will leave that for right now. Uh, so they claim Generation X, who is the hot young youth of the time, as a Generation Xer, I can tell you that we, I took a lot of pride in that that MTV generation, uh, who are young adults and trying to take over the world at this time. Some of us are going to college, da da da. Some of us are finished. Anyway, so. Uh, Generation X gets a lot of blame because they're the young people at the time, and that's who you blame when stuff is going kind of wonky. You always blame the young people. Uh, just like currently, millennials, you get blamed for everything. Yes, because that is your job right now, is to take the blame for things that you have no control over. Uh, <laughs> but they get the blame. So he said, hey, we're part of Generation X, we're degenerates. Hits the birth of D-Generation X. In that interview, the group is named. It's kind of like when Arn Anderson named the Four Horsemen and called them the Four Horsemen. At that moment, in that interview, is when they became the Four Horsemen. Prior to that, there's a group of dudes who was just jumping people. So, that is my view of how this happened. Like I said, the WWE anniversary to me is, you know, they kind of the anniversary the first time they had sex. Bye. It's more of the actual wedding, but neither here nor there. <laughs> oh God! We are going to celebrate D Generation X. We are going to talk about D Generation X throughout this episode because, regardless of what, they are a groundbreaking faction. They are a group who changed wrestling. They are a group who made the people in that group better and. Uh, spudged out some superstars okay because I am going to go in the thoughts of Triple H pre-degeneration X and thoughts of the man who rules the world right now um, I Shawn Michaels I, his legacy was kind of submitted then you know what I mean he was a bad boy yeah. he was a, he had an attitude but hey one of the greatest in-ring performers that have ever graced the business that was kind of established already in 1997 Right. Um, I think he further helps it when he comes back in 2002 after, you know, he comes back from a back injury that nobody ever thought he'd come back from, but that's another story. Uh, but yeah, so the group turns out and then what it evolves to, how it changes. We're going to go through all of that at different points in the show. Now, don't, don't regret, we are still going to talk about this week's wrestling because it was interesting. There was some stuff that happened. Right that I want to talk about there's some stuff I want to make fun of and that damn James Ellsworth is back Keish oh lord 
You know why he's like a classic heel manager? Because because he's so damn annoying. Yes, and you know what you think about when you see him? I want to whoop his ass. Yeah, you right. And you know you can do it. I think everybody who watches the show is very confident they can whoop his ass. That is a great thing for an annoying manager. Because you just want to get your hands on him. I feel right. like most of the women that he interrupts can beat him up. And if they ever get their hands on him, they're going to beat him up. And, you know, he's a good troll. Because if you respond to him on Twitter, he'll clap back. Is he funny? No, because he ain't that smart. But he will clap back. And that that is a good usage of the medium, Keish. I don't buy people who clap back. Which, yeah. if you want to get laugh at a corporate entity, Wendy's is the ultimate clap back account. Oh, yeah, you right about that. Wendy's is not here for your shenanigans. They don't pull no punches at all. They, they are like, not period. here for your shenanigans. If you tweet them like, hey, what's the, what should I do at McDonald's? They'll tell you something like, leave. Like, this is what they do. Exactly. Oh, they don't care. Like, not even a little bit, they don't care. Yeah. They don't give no fuck. And then they will hurt your feelings on top yeah. of it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like, I don't think you can afford the 4 for 4. That's fine, sir. Like, it just, <laughs> it, it, it gets bad. Like, uh, right. But, like I said, I, I'm always here for the clapback. Because I do think clapback is uh, underappreciated. Because apparently, this is how this world works. People can pick with you, but they want you to have some kind of humility about it. Right. And they want you to, um, uh, basically not go too far when you come back at them and okay I admit I am captain go too far but I wouldn't have went there if you didn't open up like I don't pick fights but I finish them um, yeah here which is hey I would tell you quiet is kept I don't like a lot of things about our current president but you know what I like his clap back because it's over the line It's too offensive It sounds like something I would say Because hey yeah. No And, yeah. I, and I'm, only talk, I'm not talking about people when he picks the fight But I'm talking about when people come for him When they sit there they be like yo This that the third And he be like yeah just like during the election It was like yo I think this man is to this and that other and Blah 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 And he like man you got 1% of the vote Why the hell you even up here talking to me That is what you need to be able to say to people. Don't know. Like, hell, what? Look. Man, get somebody besides your mama to vote for you before you sit there and speak my name. Get, look, I am Ric Flair here. Look. I go sit here, let the dude out here holler my name. When last year I made more money, I spent more money on spilt liquor, on bars around the country. That you made. Mm-mm. You talking to the Rolex wear. Tap and re-wear. Look, don't, man. Whoo. Keish. We can have a moment. <laughs> we can have a moment. But we're going to talk about Degeneration X. We're going to talk about another milestone that happened this week. That makes everybody who grew up and watched the Attitude Era feel extra old. Um, right. If you are like my co-host Who was a young kid during that time Realizing that Oh wow not a young kid anymore If you are like 12. me During that time 12. And you were an, an adult already You realize that you are now Double that adult that you used to be So yeah uh, You'll let that sink in uh, mm-hmm. Time has moved on Um and yeah, yeah. Glad to see so many people still around, still kicking it. But yeah, we gonna get to this wrestling. It's gonna be a fun show. It's gonna be a fun week. Uh, right. So let's kick it with. Uh, oh yeah, TMZ wrestling. Apparently, you people like gossip. 
So we will be back. <laughs> you know, I don't know when we'll do it again, but we will do it again. We will talk rumor. We will talk innuendo because apparently y'all like that. Who knew? Right? Was that show that popular? Good lord. Yeah. These folks love it. They eat it up. Well, I can't say anything because, I mean, I love gospel at times. Not to, it's funny. I'm the gospel that gospels to like close friends, but not like co workers and shit because I don't like them like that. Like, that's, that's the kind of gospel I am. No, no, I don't like, talk to co workers because, you know, it's kind of funny. They be trying to set you up too. Like I had a coworker tell me something this week, and it was like it ain't that it wasn't true. It ain't like people didn't know, but it was more of like I'm not so okay. You told me, right? Like exactly. I think he, I think they told me what the intent of they wanted me to uh, tell other people. Nah, right. no, uh, uh-uh. because if it come back. <laughs> You like, hey man, so you are talking stuff about me. No, I didn't talk nothing about you, man. But you know Exactly. I don't know. People are crazy. Uh no, no, you're right. Also, uh man, I hope to be leaving that job soon. But that's another story for another time. Also, donate to the Ring Time Podcast. Uh you could I th- I, I don't even know if we got donate, but uh, anywhere like we used to. <laughs> But uh, if you hit me up on Twitter, DM, I can direct you a place to get me some money. Because uh, I need to quit this job pretty soon. <laughs> I'm not doing with you, Keith. That's I'm just I'm saying, at. look, man. Look, I'll give y'all a show five days a week if I can quit my job. I would literally come over here every day and talk about wrestling. And I would talk about something. Keish, I'll start watching TNA again so I can fill the content gap. I would do, <laughs> literally, like Monday would be Raw Day. Tuesday would be SmackDown Day. Wednesday would be Lucha Underground NXT Day. Thursday would be TNA Day. And I'd come back Friday and just give you a recap of ROH and New Japan for the fuck of it. If I could, <laughs> if I could do this job full time. Because then... I have the hours to watch the wrestling, another two hours to recap it, and then another hour to record the show. All right. It can get done every day. I just right now, man, working these 40 hours at this full-time job that drains the shit out of me is, t- I, I can't do it. I can't do it. All right. Anyway, because I that, that's going into another direction that I want to go to. Uh, wrestling. So, uh, Raw, we open up. Uh, Brock Lesnar's at Raw again. This is like two weeks in a row. Brock Lesnar ain't always at the show, but Brock is showing up because it is almost SummerSlam. And he That's is right. going to be here. Also, uh, there's a lot of rumors circulating whether he's going to be there after SummerSlam. And maybe WWE just trying to use all their dates on the contract that they got because they are paying him a shit ton of money. So, is a thing. Um, but he shows up because the Miz was hosting Miz TV, and him and his boys were gonna call out Jason Jordan because Jordan already took uh, Miz to Suplex City last week, right? Um, right. And Kurt Angle, Jordan's father, came out and said, "Hey man, uh, Jordan ain't gonna be out here tonight, but I got a guy who's gonna come out. He ain't really got much to do, and it was Brock." Um. Miz set the table perfectly. I love talkers, Keish. Talkers are great people. Because they get you in the mood. They get you in the right place. Right. Just in case you were unsure if Brock had any beef with Miz or his cronies, Miz gave him some beef. He tried to he tried to spit hot fire to Paul Heyman. Who the hell does that? Miz, because he's retarded. Like... Cause it ain't no way that you're gonna tell me that you're gonna talk to Paul Heyman any kind of way and get away with it. It's Paul Heyman. Come on, man. Did he really even try to equate himself? Like he did he even try to? Mm. I mean, let, let me let me be real. Okay, this ain't that bad of a talker. Matter of fact, he's awesome on that mic. But he ain't Paul Heyman, and I'm gonna really need me to get his life together. Calm down and realize who you're talking to. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. 
Well, I mean, here's the thing. Heyman is so good at this, Keisha. I, I would let Heyman do my funeral. I oh, think God. I think Heyman could talk me into heaven. I think y'all would be like, damn. I did not know. I did not know Keith was president of the United States. Keith, shut up. Like, that's how he wow. talk about you. He'd have you hyped up. They'd be like, damn, I did not know he was president of General Motors. No, no, man. Quietly. Paul could preach you probably into heaven. Pretty sure. But, uh, also, there's a few other people that I think could preach you into heaven that I would love to have at my funeral because uh, I need all the help I can get. But, uh, <laughs> okay. <Bye>. Good night. <laughs> I'm out. I ain't dealing with you tonight. So, what I got for the segment, though, Miz is going to move on to Jason <laughs> Jordan. Uh, those guys are not going to get elevated anytime soon because uh, they let Brock just go in there and rep shop and destroy them. Like yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they couldn't about no major attack that uh, Brock came in and did his thing. And he looked good. That's what this is about. Um, Seth Rollins is defeated. Uh, Sheamus defeats Seth Rollins. And uh, Rollins got his ass beat after the match, and Ambrose didn't show up. He really didn't. I mean, didn't lift a finger, didn't move a muscle, nothing. He didn't. He was not there. He was just. We don't know where he was at, to tell the truth. Yeah. He probably was in the back, uh, all of them in their face. Like, we don't know where he was at. We don't know what he was doing. Yeah. But we know he wasn't there. Yeah, which is always <laughs> funny because, like, uh,. You know me, Keish. I kind of feel like good guys have the worst backup anyway. Because they let you get your ass beat before they start showing up. Uh, D just wasn't there. Like no. said, D was just right kicking back, kicking it with Renee. Like, hey, man. So, uh, where are we going after this? Cause are we going back home or what? <laughs> oh, shit. Right. Oh, you got to do SmackDown. Fuck. Yeah, right. yeah. No, no. I'm going to ride. I'm going to ride. I'm not going to but yeah, all right. I'll be there. Yep. Because I love showing up to work on my day off. Yep. I will be there. Which which is the assumption that he has a day off, right? Like, I don't think so. Because do you know that the WWE, hey, bro, they always try to get the money. Do you know they're, they're running a town the same night as this show? Like, like when Raw is on? The SmackDown people don't be watching Raw if they right. not on Raw like for some something special. They in another town. They're like a B town, so we're running. Like they are literally in Fayetteville, you know, North Carolina, so we're running the town the night where Raw is going on. SmackDown's running the live event. So I'm only That's assuming crazy. that Raw is in Albuquerque. It'll be on Tuesday. Try to get that guap. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Mm. Which is funny, but crazy at the same time. Well, yeah, because um, I just watched Table for Thirty. I mean, Table for Three with um, Renee, Corey, and Lita, and like Renee had made the comment of like, "Yeah, I don't get to see Raw. I only get to see like half a Raw because I'm usually traveling." when Raw is happening. And I'm like, Renee, how the hell are you traveling when Raw is happening when you're on Raw? Like, that don't make... What? Because <laughs> you see Ray. But then again, I think about it, I'm like, well, Renee Young is probably only showing up for, like, interviews. Or she's there, you know, um, yeah. for, like, special interviews, you know, with the sit-down ones and they film it somewhere else and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. like, I can, I get that. I understand that. But it's just like, what? But then, but when you put it like that, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Now this makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can get that. But, yeah, you right. Like, it's like, um, there's just a lot of travel. But I know um, it's, it's a lot going on with that. Like, it's, but forget where they was at. Like, Dean, where were you at when Seth was out there getting his ass whooped? Like, can we, <laughs> like, can we discuss this? Can we talk about this? 
Dean, like, nah, not really. Like, I, I was just in the back. I was asleep, and I had a nap to catch. What What do I need to be out here for? <laughs> right. He really just seriously looked at him like, nah, bro. <laughs> Like, I don't need like, to be out here. They're like, like I told you not to go out there and get your ass in trouble. Damn, that's kind of cold, bro. I told you I wasn't coming out there. And I probably was sitting back there by the bottom to do it. Like, yep, I, I, I'm not going out there. All right, yep, that looks like a bad situation. I ain't getting myself in that one. You know, like, it was awful. So. But then again... He had to face what Cesaro later on that that uh that night. Yeah. So they were going to be back out there again anyway. Yeah, <sighs> but we'll talk about that, right? Yeah. So it was foolish. Like you know what that whole situation that's funny to me anyway, because it's kind of like, and this is why I say it. It's because. Seth is all in Dean's face, like, dude, man, why won't you forgive me for this thing that happened three years ago? And then Dean's looking at him like, are you serious? Like, what? <laughs> he's really confused as to why he don't understand why he's not so quick to be like, oh, yeah, you know, it's water under your bridge. Like, are you serious? Come on, man. Like, you can't keep telling a person when they should forgive you. Why would you let it go? I don't have to let it go. Like, <laughs> like I was, I've been waiting for Dean to be like, I don't have to let it go. Like, I don't trust you, dude. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, come on, man. No matter how much he, well, what he does or how much he tries to, like, prove, want to prove to him he's a changed man. Dean's looking at him the whole time like, dude, you ain't changed shit, okay? You haven't changed anything. Stop lying. I'm not dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? Because, of course, it was easy for Dean and Roman to get along because they never fell out, really. But, like, for Seth, it was a different story because he was the one that turned his back on everybody, on the both of them. So, like... He already, with Roman, it it took time. But with Dean, he's trying to, like, shove himself down his throat. Like, it's like, you're going to be my friend. Like, no, I don't have to. (laughs) Like, Mm. don't you understand that? I don't have to. Yeah, like, fuck you and your friendship. Right, like, that's what Dean's been trying to tell him this whole time. Like, dude, I don't have to like you. Yeah. We were cool once, but now we're not. And you fucked us up. So why? Why do I have to be the one to be like, well, you know what? It's fine, and I forgive you. No, I'm going to fuck you out of my face. Like, what do you mean? So that's, that's what's been getting me about this whole situation. Like, I literally, you know what? I've always liked stuff from From the time he was in the shield to the time he turned his back on the shield up until now. Like, I've always liked Seth Rollins. I've always liked Dean, but the way that they're doing stuff right now is like, mm. oh my God. You right. know, because he's just looking so helpless. And it's like, no, no, you don't make Seth Rollins look helpless because what the hell? Right. But I guess that's the only way to get this to work with him in, but you're right you can't just put them two back together and be done with it too because there's a lot to the story and I guess you know they have to play it out as the story was as the story has happened so it makes sense but at the same time it really sucks to see right um Bailey is hurt officially shoulder busted oh cannot my rest God, last that, summer that slam hurt. that hurt my heart that hurt uh, my heart. I was so ready for bruh, to win that title. I'm just saying, if you don't know Toronto, if it's not Wrestling Bizarro World, if it's a heel town, because Bailey got up there and got booed, I was like, damn. Yeah. 
They ruled daily. Yeah. Daily. Of all people, daily. Like, yeah. You could have picked anybody else to boo, and you picked Bailey. Oh yeah, Bailey. No, that, that just means you will boo Santa Claus. I mean, pretty much. <laughs> like, because that's that's the. I like to give hugs, and I like rainbows and unicorns, baby. Like, come on, man. Yes. Actually, I'll say this: maybe slightly more egregious than boo Santa Claus. That's all ridiculous. Yeah, you right. <sighs> I, I can mean, agree with that one because it's like, Bailey. Like, what is your beef with the Easter buddy? Like, I mean, that's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> and there's people out there, and you know what? They actually were like justifiably doing this. Like, oh yeah, it's Bailey. Like, no, yeah. that's not. Are you serious? It's Bailey. Like, of all people, Bailey. Like, really? I just, I couldn't. I was done. But you know what? I was so done. Maybe that goody goody thing this is a turn off for people. They like, uh uh-uh, uh, man, ain't nobody that damn goody goody. Get this damn girl off. Yeah. Um, well, you know, like, people mm. don't agree. They they really don't agree with that shit. Like, there's people out there like, nah, bro. Like, she might be putting on. <laughs> like, she's really putting it on quick. Like, come on, for real? Mm. You gotta be like that, though? I guess like that with some folks. So yeah, they just wouldn't have it. They're like, nope, take your hugs. Go back where you're from. Mm. Get out my face. Like, well, That's messed up. Who wouldn't want hugs? Like, how can you not want a hug? Hugs are awesome. Sorry, I'm an advocate for hugs. I see. <laughs> oh, I always have been. Like, what? Mm. I, like who really doesn't want a hug like come on man it's a hug okay I'm gonna stop alright um, right. with that being said let's go down the line of this uh, Jason Jordan uh, defeats Jean-Pierre Goulet uh, not really what? what we're talking about Sasha Banks was a triple threat match when she defeats Emma and Alicia Fox to get the triple threat qualified match um uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson defeat Enzo in the Big Show. Uh, of course, Big Cash showed up. Uh, chaos Whoa. ensued a little bit. Uh, so basically, Enzo has to be paired with another mostly C Big guy. Really? Cause kinda, that's just how you. Kind of the same shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, kind of what I said would have happened. Like, they got to find somebody to do what the other guy did for. Right. But they they're doing it for Enzo, but they're not doing it for Cass. Yeah, like, I think, that's what I'm noticing. I think they're more confident Cass moving on than Enzo. Uh, Enzo, I mean, psh, okay, like he goes off TV, he might get some indie spots, but what else you really gonna do with him? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I understand uh, that one. Yeah. So. Just kind of a thing. But. Um, but, yeah. I was happy to Anderson and Gallows won a match. <laughs> right. Right? Because they have been doing that so wrong lately. And I can't deal. You know what I looked but, at today? Keish, this is off subject, but kind of old subject because it's wrestling. Uh, apparently, McIntyre put out something with Jinder Mahal with the uh, world title. Mm-hmm. And I was like. Hey man, three years later, three of B is kind of on it. Right, right. It's like shit. Maybe this is they play it all along. I <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. Uh, we could be three and B, and then yeah. later on, just but they were just awful. Like it was like, why? That was horrible. <laughs> I'm just saying, like they they're a horrible group. Right. That's why when when okay, so here's the thing about and I'm I know I'm getting my phone too, but when Jinder Mahal even won the match to become the number one contender for the WWE title, like everybody was like 
Jinder Mahal. <laughs> then this guy just like literally lose a match, a few matches like in the last few weeks. Like it literally was like night and day. Like in in a, in a overnight. Like, this guy went from being this huge, jacked-up jobber to being, well, to be the, to being WWE champion. Like, it was literally mm. just, like, a blink of an eye. So, people really just couldn't grasp, you know, that this was happening. I still get questions of, like, how is Jinder Mahal still champion, you know? Mm. But what I think all of them needed was was the actual opportunity to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think that's what it was. It's like certain people I feel just don't get the opportunity to really express themselves the way they need to. Like when Heath Slater was paired with Rhino and they became SmackDown the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. I thought that was awesome. You know what I'm saying? Because before then. Heath was just out there on a mic talking smack and like it got him nowhere. Mm. You know, him by himself really wasn't surviving. So it was great to see him in that in some level of a role with a belt and given the opportunity to kind of create his character and kind of be out there. Um, I feel like with gender, it did the same. It did the same thing because I've seen his NXT episodes where he was doing his promos and stuff. And then when he joined 3MB, I swear to you, it didn't even look like the same person to me. Like I was like, "Who the hell is this?" You know. Mm. So um, it was different, but as we can see, eventually it worked. So right. I mean, what else can you say? Mm. All right. Um, so Bray Wyatt attacks Finn Balor. Don't really know what to make of that. Uh, Dean uh, defeats Cesaro. Uh, right. Do those guys try to jump him? But at, at Rollins comes. Uh, Dean and Rollins have an awkward moment after the match. Right. Uh, okay. So. Am I the only one who thought that awkward moment was kind of funny? Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. Because, okay, like, it was funny to me because in my mind, I'm kind of like doing commentary of what they were saying, like, while they were looking at each other. Things like, oh, so you did come out here and help me, huh? Right. Just was down, like, dude, I told you I had you back. And Dean's looking at him like, well, maybe you do. Maybe I can trust you a little bit. That's why I've been trying to tell you, dude. What the fuck? So then Dean puts his fist out and he like, and Seth's looking at him like, oh, now you want to be cool. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, like, he's giving him this look like, oh, now you want to be cool. And then he just like, nah, bro. Like, I don't have time for this shit. You playing games and I'm done. And he walks out. Like, that's how I saw that whole situation, and that's why I started laughing. So, that's why I thought it was funny. Mm. That's my story for the night. Well, just one of them. I probably, I'm pretty sure I got another one later. Because all this stuff this week was just, it was pretty interesting. But, that's neither here nor there. Let's continue. Can we do that? Right. Mm. So, um, Nia Jax defeats Mickey James and Dana Brooke to get her spot for the Triple Threat Qualified match. Uh, Braun Strowman defeats Roman Reigns in a last man standing match, Keish. Now, why are we having a last man standing match the week before, the, like two weeks before the pay-per-view, almost? Uh, that's my question. That's what I wanted to know because I was kind of confused by that, too. Like, first like, of all, I These two don't, don't even need a, be destroyed a what's it for all, right? Because they go ahead. Because right. the last time they tried to do a what's it for all, they still came back and had the few. Right. Exactly. So it made no sense to have that one for all because, hell, they still were having matches against each other. Yes, yeah, she's on face Braun Strowman. Mm-hmm. Didn't they just... But I thought... Never mind. <laughs> that was me, like... But I thought... 
But you said, okay, never mind. Mm. Forget it. Forget it. Like, that's what everybody thought. That's what everybody assumed. And everybody was, thought they were right until this happened. Because I, I didn't get it either. I didn't get it either. But SmackDown made the same mistake. And we're going to get to that when we get to SmackDown. So, but yeah, it was just retarded. But then, not only that, but you forget that there's two other competitors in this championship match for SummerSlam with Roman and Braun. And one of them decided, oh, I'm going to interfere because I can do that because, hey, these are my points for SummerSlam and I'm trying to take out both of them. So, there's that too. Braun didn't win on his own. Not even by long shots. Mm. Hell, if it wasn't for Samoa Joe, um, I don't think Bond would have won it, period. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Can't really say if, it, if that was the case or not because we'll never know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm. We'll never know. <laughs> but that coquina clutch is just shit though I need to learn how to do that just so I can do it on somebody one day playing with my life <laughs> that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying or maybe I don't need to know how to do that you know right. I, I don't I don't think I need to know how to do that I'll leave that one to, to the professionals and people with some kind of level of sanity because I'm mm. I appreciate that <laughs> but um so <laughs> Um, Braun beats Roman Samoa Joe was there Got involved uh, So More Samoa on Samoa and crime um, With that being said uh, I think it's time for our first break We're going to hit our break We're going to come back We're going to do what we usually do Birthdays and news And then we are on to Our main event Oh we got to talk smack now And we will talk about NXT Because uh, oh, We got to talk about NXT the Red Cup Revolution has started, Keith. Yes, yes. I I, I still don't know how I feel that. about this. You know what? I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna make that my ringtone. I'm gonna make that my ringtone. And I'm okay. Let me stop. Let still me on the fence. Of course you are, Keith. Of course you are. All right. Uh, wanna go ahead? We'll be back shortly. I'm Jim Cornette, and I just wonder if any of you are sick and tired as I am of people who claim to be the icon of wrestling. Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper claim to be the icon. Shawn Michaels is the icon that can still go. Bret Hart would claim to be the icon if he wasn't too busy crying about being screwed. And I guess Randy Savage is still thinking, thinking. Well, Shawn Michaels is still the single most talented athlete in wrestling today inside the ring. But outside, he's an adolescent obnoxious jerk who takes his tights and goes home if he doesn't get his way. Bret Hart is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, but if he'd have been screwed as many times as he claims, he'd have struck oil by now. And Randy Savage is a legend, but let's face it, how many records did Frank Sinatra sell last year? But the pinnacle of this icon garbage came at last night's cage match between Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper to determine in their minds only who the real icon is. WCW had the gall to say this the greatest cage match in history when it was only the greatest in three weeks since hell in the cell. But here you've got a 46-year-old bald movie star wannabe who looks like Uncle Creepy with a good bill taking on a guy with an artificial hip that hadn't wrestled a full schedule in 10 years. It's a tribute to the massive egotism in my mind of both men and an indictment of WCW's promotional policies that this match even took place, much less be in the main event when the card was probably the best that WCW is capable of having. By the 10-minute mark they were sucking wind so bad, the first three rows passed out of oxygen deprivation. It would have been funny if it wasn't so sad. Well, I'm sick and damn tired of hearing guys claim to be the icon Icon, especially when it usually comes from guys who just didn't know when to quit. Roddy Piper was my idol when I was a teenager, but that was 20 years ago. Hulk Hogan during his best years was 50% media creation, and those are long gone. This match was a slap in the face to every wrestler that takes pride in his profession. And in my mind, no one man is bigger than this sport. But if there is an icon, it would be a man who has great ability inside the ring and professionalism and maturity outside of it. Let's leave all the petty backstabbing I make more money than you BS with the hat check girl and concentrate on talent and attitude. The Undertaker, Ric Flair, and Steve Austin have never claimed to be icons, which means they're big candidates to be just that. And on a personal note to Hulk Hogan, you are a household word, but so is garbage, and it stinks when it gets old, too. I'm Jim Cornette, and that's my opinion. Well, Cornette has told you his opinion. Uh, I, I figured I set stage with a little something, you know, different, because we kind of go back in time. 
Back to 1997. Um, Monday Night Wars are at their peak, and people try to figure out what the hell to do. Uh, but <laughs> with that being said, it is August the 11th. Birthdays, Keish. Birthdays. Yesterday was August 10th. Uh huh. Tugboat, aka Typhoon, had a birthday. Uh, you also may know him as the Shockmaster. Or as actually <laughs> uh, Dusty Rosa called Uncle Fred. Uh, Savio Vega celebrated a birthday. Savio Vega turned 53 uh, yesterday. Wade Barrett turned 37 yesterday. He's 37? Yeah. These wrestling ages get me sometimes. Um, Bill Alfonso. Um... ECW fame uh, turns 60. Wow, yeah, that is correct. Uh, today, August 11th. And, Keish. Mm-hmm. August 11th is the birthday of another WWE superstar. Well, former superstar. Hall of Famer. Do you want to guess? Uh, how, wait, how long has he been a Hall of Famer? Uh, it's been a while now. What's a while, Keith? Are we talking while. three years, six years, ten years? What is a while? I say a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe it might be ten years now. Yep, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> well, it's fight for what's right, fight for your life. You can hear that Where music. That? You can hear that music. You know that it's one and only Hulk Hogan. Get out of here, Hulk good. Hogan. Boo! You could have kept that. Sixty-four shit. today. <laughs> 64 years old. Can't say a lot. I am a real American. Fight for the rights you of every man. I am a real American. I'm you right now. Fight for the rights. Well, except for unless you're African American, then I will not fight for your rights, but that is a different story. No. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. for the last time. Boo, you could have kept that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Cause now, like when I'm in like a, a, an auditorium or something, I'll be hearing somebody speaking about my, like in my dream world, I'll be going to say, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> but, no, you can't. You can. It is possible. Like, um, yeah, I'll I, I, I probably get fired, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm which, telling you right now, I hate it. Like, oh, Keith, I swear like, to God, I, if I hit this back of billions, I am working like a month after just to be an ass. I am officially sending <laughs> all my work emails. Yeah, yours in negritude. <laughs> Keith. <laughs> 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 As I'm closing out all my emails now, they'd be like, yours in negritude, Keith Hopes. Uh-uh. No. You're like, what the hell is negritude? Oh, he said in blackness. Yeah. You ain't got no level of damn sense in negritude. Shut up. <laughs> like, why would you do such things? Hey, man. The hell am I looking? Oh. And they were too chub. You know what? You would do some shit like that too. You yeah. send emails that have nothing in them, but just small. Like it'd be one sentence or a couple words, and that'd be it. Right. Hello, everyone. You all suck balls. And they were too Like, <laughs> like what? Like what? Like what did he that? really just send this to the whole office? Uh, um. Be like yes. Yes, I did. 
But uh, yeah, so you that, all suck. That is the birthday. Um, there's no birthdays tomorrow, and on Sunday, Spike Dudley turns forty-seven. So, right, that's the thing. What is Spike Dudley doing with his life? I need to find uh, out. He might be teaching school again. Did I know Spike Dudley was an elementary school teacher? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was completely unaware of this situation. But, uh, yeah, that's going down. So, news. The big news of the week. Now, last week we was talking TMZ, wrestling and all that stuff. Well, we talked about Eva Marie, I think, departing for the WWE. Uh, which, hey, Eva Marie is gold, right? So, is that the last domino standard from the Divas era? Like, is that the one that officially says the Diva Turb is dead? Like, that is officially put it up. Yeah, I mean, I want to say yes. Like, that was it, you know? Yeah. But I want to say yeah. That, mm-hmm. that was done. Uh, also, uh, you may have wonder why you haven't seen the Hardings on TV. Um, well, they were doing a few with the revival, and Scott Dawson had an injury, so... Uh, Creative currently doesn't have anything for them. They don't know what's going on next. Well, I... Okay, so I was watching the... Uh, I subscribed to Pro Wrestling Unlimited on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And so they said that the Hardys aren't, weren't in Toronto because Jeff is not allowed in Canada due to his... the Some past drug convictions like some various drug charges yeah. that he had in back in 2009 like because he went to jail for it and all that kind of stuff like he's not allowed in Canada so right now they are trying to the WAE are trying to work with Canada right. uh, in order to kind of change to get that changed so that he can because he's not allowed in certain countries because of those drug charges Mm-hmm. So they're trying to work with Canada, at least, you know, so he could... Because, you know, they do a lot of shows in Canada. Not just mm-hmm. Toronto, but in other cities. And if he can't go to Canada, he can't do the show. So Matt, instead of Matt going by himself and being at Raw by himself, they just kept both of them off the show entirely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, because, um, you know, Matt's not... They're not solo competitors. They are packaged as a team at this point, so they were like, well, you know, we don't have nothing for Matt. Let's just, you know, we're not, you know, y'all both can just be off until we get back to the States. So, like, they just kind of, like, played it out like that. Because I was, I was wondering, too, like, why they weren't on Raw, but then I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. So, yeah. Right. That's deep. <laughs> um, the Enzo Amore thing, Keish. Apparently, he has major heat backstage. Yeah, people think he's highly fucking annoying. <laughs> right, like it, and it has caught fire because everybody who used to work there all are in agreement. Uh, That's crazy. Current people who work there don't talk because they'll talk about stuff like that because that'll get them in trouble. But. Ex right. co-workers are like, yeah, no, nope, no, nope. always knew he was a dick. Nope, nope, nope. That that guy shouldn't have friends. Nope. It's like it's just bad. Wow. Um, like, uh, apparently, a lot of Enzo's issues come from some things of how he acted in the locker room and how he treated the locker room. Um, uh, I allegedly there's an issue with some family that came there, and it was kind of wilding out, just running around, and people, you know didn't appreciate that and those people were taking pictures and taking pictures of talent backstage which is kind of a no-no right for a variety of reasons right hypothetically let's say I'm at catering and I'm Nia Jax and Sasha Banks roll in and I'd be like Sasha what's up girl want some cantaloupe and then somebody got you on camera it's kind of like hey she ain't supposed to like me you know what I mean 
Now, I know we all know right. what this thing is, but you're supposed to kind of still respect, respect some integrity. Also, backstage, mind you, these guys don't have, like, you know those pictures that you see with their name on the door and stuff like that? The dressing room? Yeah. That ain't theirs. That ain't for real. So, understand that a lot of people are back there just getting dressed for their match. Uh, especially some right. of the women competitors. I think they don't want cameras around people. They already got a problem with people showing up naked on the internet. Right. They don't need your help. Exactly. Uh, mind you, those people who show up naked on the internet uh, show up far more naked than people just changing clothes. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we'll talk about that on later date. Who do page was on the up up down down podcast? Oh, shut up! <laughs> I'm just saying. I didn't know. I didn't know until I saw that. I was like, oh wow, she is giving a new meaning to up up down down. Uh, hey man, I didn't know um, Xavier Woods and Brad Maddox were a tag team. They play around somebody joystick. I'm just saying, like they need to get their lives together. They just they all they all nasty they all nasty <laughs> they all nasty it's so ridiculous like really I'm not gonna lie I was just kind of like this really happened this is real life and I am not dreaming what the fuck <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's all you can really say about that entire situation right who um, knew yeah. Mm-mm. But apparently, like, Enzo has all kinds of heat, and it is spreading, and it has been picked up by a variety of major news outlets, so, uh... Yeah. 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 And they say it just keep getting worse, man, like, they say it just keep getting worse, and they don't know what to do with them. Like, I have even heard of, I know these are, like, rumors and everything, but I've even heard of talks of him, like, being moved back to NXT yet. Or just taken off completely because they just they they really just can't stand them. Right. Like it's like yeah no no dude you need to calm down. Like personally, I think that he needs to be. Um, but even if he was in like the cruiserweight division or on two or five live or something like that, one it just doesn't fit him, so they wouldn't put him there anyway. But two like. He'd still be on Raw, so it wouldn't even make a difference. Right. Like, it wouldn't. It just wouldn't make a difference. So, there's that. Right. Also. Um. Yeah, so, uh, with that being said, uh, Keith, let's get into Smack Him, smack him Down. Uh, oh, yeah. John Cena opens up the show. Uh, and, yes, inter- it does. and he gets interrupted by Baron Corbin. They play all the clips from the end of the previous week's show where Cena lost to Shisei Nakamura, and then uh, Baron Corbin came out to confront him. You know, I I actually am very. You know, it's, I'm very interested in this feud between Baron Corbin right. and Nakamura and. I, 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 cause, oh my god, their matches have been incredible. And like, I'm really invested into this thing. But, mm. with, I think that's why, only reason why Corbin is even coming after Cena in the first place. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it has something to do with that, but not really. So at the end of the day, like, it's like, why even do it, Corbin? You know? What is the point? But, at the same time, I kind of figured that they weren't going to go because I, I actually thought at the beginning of the show, like, I was like, you know, see, I ain't, ain't doesn't have a match at SummerSlam. Like, I don't think he's going to have one. Like, you're going to have a SummerSlam without Cena? Oh, my God, it's unheard of. And, but then this happened, and I was just kind of like, okay, maybe, maybe this will change things, you know? Right. Maybe. Maybe this would be something different. <laughs> you know, so that's all I can really put my finger on. That's all well, I can really put my finger on with that one. Well, I mean, you got a pretty wide net there. Um, like I said, so that's it for there. Um, 
Corbin, I think I still think he has potential, but I'm kind of backing up off of him. Like, oh wow, this guy could be a fake Kevin Nash. They just ain't gonna be that good. Was the same thing I said about yeah. Cass. Same thing I said about Cass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I know Devin is trying though. Like he really, he's trying. Um, but um. Corbin does not make it. Uh, but, hey, Daniel Bryan. See, his brother-in-law needs some help. Makes a match. SummerSlam. Be Baron Corbin. Gets John Cena. Yeah. Good luck. You go into a pay-per-view against the top guy. Good luck. Uh, Shane McMahon, Kevin Owens, and AJ Styles have an awkward moment in the ring. And they were reminded that, hey, man, a few months ago, uh, AJ Styles wants to beat the hell out of uh, what Kevin Mitchell. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, AJ and uh, Shane had an issue after WrestleMania that uh, I guess they kind of let this is clear up, but they're not really cleared up. Keith, what did you think of that segment? Uh, I didn't know what to think of that segment. To tell the truth. Like, I don't know. <laughs> trust me, you asked it the wrong one when it comes to that one because I didn't know really what to make make of it. Um, I you know what? I don't, I guess I can honestly say I'm not surprised. But yeah. um, I think that they they needed to cast doubt, right? But like they couldn't make it outright, like, obviously, maybe Owens and Shane have an issue, right? So they, they cast some right. out. And for all intents and purposes, Shane could turn heel. This could be where Shane, like, yeah. hey, man. Hey, Shane has but, a historical track record of being as screwy as a special guest referee. But you know what, Keith? I am glad. And I am so glad I have been waiting for someone Someone, I didn't care who it was. I didn't care what the moment was. I didn't care. I've been waiting for someone to do that. Pull those clips, show those, show them to them, and like be like, "This is you. You did that. That was you, sir." You know what I'm saying? Like Shane. It was funny how Shane had completely kind of brushed down on the rug, like. Oh, you're talking about other McMahons. You're not talking about me. Owens was like, nah, bruh, roll the tape. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that was, those were, that, to me, that segment, that was, like, my favorite part of the entire thing. When he was just kind of like, hey, let me show you what you did to him a few months ago. And then Shane's like, no, nah, I don't screw people over. I was like, oh, really? Roll the tape. Like, like, like that, that to me was what I had been waiting on. Because there's times where you're watching it and they bring up something and you're like, but that happened before. You know, and you want it to be shown, but of course it's not going to be. No. And when they be like, first it, time it, ever. Yeah, you'd be like, that definitely isn't. But okay, like the fuck <laughs> like so are we just erasing history right now like what are you serious so yeah I I don't know but I commend both you know I commend AJ for being like for just setting the record straight and being like hey <laughs> I don't trust nobody so you ain't gotta worry about me at, uh, having to feel like I gotta watch my back with him cause I don't trust him no way. You know what I'm saying? So, jokes on you, buddy. Like, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed this segment, but I'm not surprised by some of the actions. Like I said, it's, it is nothing, like, new to me. I'm like, oh, right. it's just awesome. So, um, I'm not, I was not, uh, nothing was far-fetched in that conversation. Yeah. The Usos and uh, defeat Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger. Um, Keish was that. Are uh, Sami and Ty a tag team now or something? You know what? Let me tell you about Sami and Ty. Okay. 
they because they're getting on my nerves. So they were trying it out. I think that it might continue to be that way, but I mean, Ty Dillinger, Sami Zayn. Like, I really feel like they're both becoming the same and that's getting nowhere for either one of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really isn't. So I don't really even know how to even express that even further than that. It's like they're both the same. They're both becoming the same. Like, Ty is starting to get into Sammy's territory, and then it's like they're both not really getting anywhere. So what are you really... But I ain't going to lie to the Usos. The match with the Usos is pretty good, but the Usos definitely have my boot right now. Like in everything. I don't even care. Like, yeah. So. Mm. Um, Charlotte uh, defeats Lana in a one on one match. Um, but you know. I mean, it's Lana. <laughs> right. So, I mean, what can you really say? It's Lana. Like, there is nothing else to really express about that situation. Fauna. <laughs> like, can I talk about the new days jumpsuits? Or, you know what? Because I'm so random. And I think about how the Usos are really just like one of my favorites right now, like of everybody. And then I think about the new day coming out there. But it was funny because the distraction was hilarious. And then. Like, you just see Xavier Woods and Kofi just come out of nowhere and just flying all over the Usos. And I love this rivalry between the Usos and, and the New Day right now. I do. And I am enjoying every second of it. Every single one. So, I hope they keep this up for a while. I do. But... Nonetheless, the show had to go home, so. Right. You yeah. are correct. The show did have to go on. Um, Carmella defeated Naomi. With the help of James Ellsworth. Yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah, go on and throw that little asterisk on there. <laughs> go ahead and throw that little asterisk on it, because you know that's what was next. You know, you know that it was next. James L. Ugh. Horrible. That's <laughs> been just horrible. Boo. <laughs> Stop that shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> the next time I go to a show, I'll like something. I swear I'm saying that. Yeah. Like, and boo, uh, stop this shit. Yeah, boo. <laughs> you with the afro. Get off the stage. <laughs> oh, man. So, like, what, what the hell? Right. So, uh, that's that. Randy Orton defeats Jinder Mahal in a grudge match. Uh, Rusev beats up Randy Orton after the match. Um, of course. Do you have any faith in a, a Randy Orton Rusev feud? <laughs> how, am I, how am I supposed to be, Ricky? Okay? Can you tell me that? Sure. Um, but that. I don't know. So, that's it for SmackDown. So, um, NXT, Keish. We have not discussed NXT yeah. on the show in a while. Right? And I, but I've been watching every week. I've been watching every week. So, uh, San, Sandy, you think they can win the tag team titles? Sandy can win the tag team titles. I have faith in Sandy. Do say. I mean, all right. I turn it on Wednesday... And I see old girl in the ring. Next thing you know, 
I see the author of pain, authors of pain come out, and I see the rest of sanity, and I'm like, oh wow! And then Eric Young jumped people from behind. I'm saying, damn, these people are crazy. Yeah, yeah, they're insane, and I love it. I love every single minute of it. They okay, are awesome. I want you to understand. You just said they are insane, and I love every single minute of it. Okay, just want to make sure we got it. <laughs> Well, yeah, because yeah, like there's you like, which, which is which is funny because it's obviously. like if when you when you say their name in a sentence and it and then you listen back in your mind to what you just said, it's hilarious. It's like yeah, there's sanity, you know, like there's three insane individuals that like to wrestle and then it's like yeah I mean who doesn't love Sandy you know? <laughs> who doesn't love Sandy I mean Sandy is awesome like what do you mean and and then you're like huh and if you were to sit back and actually think about all of it it's like oh yeah uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying man Sandy they are one of my favorite groups, and Nikki Cross is is freaking awesome. Okay, I'm done. All right. So, uh, yeah, man, that was that's sanity. Um, here's the thing: wasn't prepared to see Authors of Pain um, as kind of de facto baby faces. No, no, but. I mean, it is what it is. So, but uh, these guys are setting up because in two weeks, well, next week's show is previewing SummerSlam, and we are previewing Takeover, Takeover Three. Don't, don't, don't Takeover. Yep, that's what we're doing. So, uh, be prepared. Uh, understand, we're going with it. But yeah, uh, but the biggest thing that I want to talk about were the debut of the Street Profits. Uh, Keish, what were your impression of the Plastic Cup Boys? I was dancing and tripping with them. I wanted a red solo that day. Like, I was in there juking. I wouldn't use the word juking and jiving because that's just awful. But I was just acting a fool when they came out there, okay? I rewatched that match like five times because I just wanted to see them come out, do their thing, and exit stage left. Like, they are greatness. Their promos have been excellent these past few weeks. And now to see everything just come together, yeah, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. If I ever see NXT Live, I'm taking a red solo cup just so I can get him signed up. I get both of them. Like, I, I thought it was greatness, you know. Okay, so the name in itself, along with their, like, portrayed personalities, of course, but, I mean, this is WWE, so. But, like, they, I don't know. I know one thing, that match was awesome. I can tell you that. So. Yeah. But, um, good to see the Street Profits are here. We'll see what they uh, do. Uh, Roderick Strong interrupted a conversation that Bobby Roode was having with Drew McIntyre. Keish, see if Bobby Roode in a ring with Drew McIntyre has me like, whoa. Yeah. Did I just watch Impact? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, you really do have to reevaluate what you're looking at. Like, you have to train your eyes to look at the screen and be like, okay, this is real. You know? Because it just, it does, it just doesn't. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely is just, it's like that. Like. Uh, uh, Andre seeing a llamas defeated uh no way Jose no way Jose uh Danny Birch uh defeated One Lokan 
And that was pretty much it for the uh, NXT. Uh, I think they got a big event covered July 20th or something. Mm, no. But um, let's come talk about what we came to talk about. Keish, oh, did I not mention somewhere in our news and notes and all that? Uh, on August 9th, two days ago, it was the 18th mm-hmm. anniversary of Jericho coming to Raw. Eighteen years since Chris Jericho uh, left WCW and showed up on Raw and interrupted the one and only Rock. Eighteen years. Yes. Shit. Um, it can now vote. It can now buy cigarettes. Awesome. Uh, it can be tried as an adult. Yeah. 18. But uh yeah, that happened. Um Keish. Any yeah. stand out Jericho moments or you know Actually the his debut was a is a stand out Jericho moment. Um because of the fact that he interrupted the rock to do it. And oh my god, he he was an interesting character, to say the least. So Jericho was absolutely amazing well, when it came to the simplest of situations. Yeah, well, I'll say this too: he was in a unique situation where here's the thing. Um, Monday Night Wars are hot and heavy. We are in 1999. Right. 1999 is when WWE is making that turn in the tide, right? This is where they're about to start leading the old uh, rating sweep that probably eventually closes WCW. Uh, Jericho is significant because we, we focus on the people who come over to who left WWE or WWF, but the people who came from WCW, it wasn't that many, but Big Show is probably the first major defector like on the front line it really really probably hurt right uh Jericho leaving a cover to WWE I don't think necessarily hurt because they didn't have any plans for Jericho I think what it did was it showed hey hey man you know what we could do with this we could get you that you know what I mean and if I'm choosing you know try to choose the best thing to do mm-hmm. That would be it, uh, but yeah, man, it's 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 kind of crazy just to think that eighteen years ago. But like I said, we're in Monday Night Wars, and I think he's one of the people who helped turn keep that tide turned. And because the thing with WCW was it was always screwed over young talent, and you know, in favor for the old people. Well, fast forward. I mean, it's. Uh, what company still here? The other one ain't. And I think that's one of the things. Like, you know, this is a guy who was uh, WWE before the invasion storyline. Like, he's he's not an inherited contract or nothing. And this also was a sign that people would take less money to to leave the chaos at WCW. Because up front guarantee is like, oh, no, we don't cover that. <laughs> but, yeah, that happened. So, follow it two days later, man. Now we're talking about the 20th year of Degeneration X. Keish, could this mm-hmm. be the greatest faction of all time? I'm going to say this. I don't know if it's the greatest faction of all time. Because at their best... Uh, well, you know what? Here's the thing. All right, Shawn Michaels is a Hall of Famer, correct? I think Triple H is going to go to the Hall of Fame. Rick Rude is in the Hall of Fame. China is deserving. That's three. That's like all four of your founders. Now, the second generation of DX, is what, which we're going to talk about later on uh, throughout this show... Uh, Shard is gone Shard has hurt his back 
And we go We need some more people Triple H can't be out here low with China And uh, he, he gets on the phone He gets to crack it He picks up his man uh, Sean Walkman uh, You know X-Pac X-Pac cuts the meeting for promo And then bam Everybody back at work So uh, That would be Something to talk about But uh, Yeah man They are X-Pac joins uh, The New Age Outlaws Join the group New Age Outlaws Easily can be considered One of the greatest tag teams In the history of WWE Um, So You got that going for yourself Like this group There's no slouches in the group Uh, There are no slouches in this group I think they are uh, powerful Like I said they have an enduring legacy Uh, When they got back together In like 2006 Man people went crazy You know we we got Triple H out there Uh and he, he, Charles Michaels and we see Sean they get jumped by the spirit squad the spirit squad is what brought the group back but yeah man uh, they they was there they down so appreciate it uh, with that being said I think we are going to call this show a wrap um, the Monday Night Wars are were an interesting time uh, I think DX is definitely definitely can be attributed to turn the tide in the Monday Night Wars because this is what you got to stick to. All right, Austin is the anti-hero, right? And Austin is at the top of this pyramid of what takes his tide to beat and take it down WCW. WCW still shifted towards old guys. That was one of the things that did the problem with Jericho. WCW was shifted towards the. I mean, WWE was trying to develop this new young talent. Uh, 97 Steve Austin is growing like the legend grows like it, it pops off in 96 but the legend just kind of continues to grow it culminates in 98 when he was the belt which he does that against Shawn Michaels in DX but uh, yeah 97 man they needed some stuff The Rock hadn't really fully developed yet you know what I mean that that gym was getting shined uh, DX shows on what it did was it took Triple H out of his mid-card kind of dry status and gave him the personality and appeal that set him up to be a main eventer. Like, he's one of the few people in the, within the same faction that goes from sidekick to leader and has a successful transition in leadership. To the point where, hey, when Sean came back 10 years later, and they was running DX it was just seen as two equals because this guy built himself up to be an equal I mean because he's going to be all time great the guy's got 14 title reigns and a lot of early ones was when titles really meant something so you know mm. but uh yeah yeah it was a, it was a rest of rest situation um like I said, we're going to talk about it a little more. Uh, I have a post that should be up later on tonight on the website, ringtimeprowrestling.com, that will tell you more about my thoughts on DX. Uh, also, coming soon, ringtimeprowrestling.com. Keisha breaks down the May Young Classic, uh, gives you a preview. That's right. And it is going down. Uh, but with that being said, we are going to wrap this up. We will be back next week. We will be previewing. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Part 3. We will also be previewing SummerSlam. Yes, it is the third TakeOver. Third time NXT has done TakeOver in Brooklyn. Keish, that program has been around a while now. You got to think. Yeah. We are on, like, I don't know what cycle we are of talent. Like, to the point, most of the roster that is active now are people that came out of that system, right? Right. Bray Wyatt, right. Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, uh, Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. They are all, Shisei Nakamura, all people, and this is despite their, their talent and their ability before they come to WWE, 
But they all spent time in the NXT, right? Right, right. So. Yeah, I mean, and I'm excited for them. Like, the tell the truth, NXT is, it's, it's an incredible thing to watch, you know? I don't think, it's, it's an incredible opportunity to actually physically see developmental go through this cycle of, of, um, of honing their skills and their characters and all of that, you know what I'm saying, before they get up to the main stage. Like, I think I think that this is like one of the most genius ideas, really, um, that we've seen. But it's it's awesome. Like, um, I'm excited. I'm just as excited for Takeover Brooklyn uh, to three. I was going to say two because I'm behind. I was going to say um, I'm ex- just as excited for that as I am for SummerSlam. Like this is going to be, oh, this is going to be good, Keith. This is going to be good. Well, so would that? Well, we still same? got one more Raw, one more Raw, one more SmackDown, and one more NXT people. So mm-hmm. let's keep it together. Right. But with that being said, we are out. We will catch you guys next week. And, you know, we'll talk more about this wrestling. So with that being said, peace. Bye.